Hi guys, welcome to the channel. My name's Tom, you may have seen me on Project Nigel. Some of you, this may be your first time coming to the channel and you think, what the hell's going on? So basically what we're doing is we're taking an old Rover engine from like 2003, an old K-series turbo engine, but we're mating it to a DSG gearbox out of the Volkswagen Golf demographic, the DQ250. You'll see it in like the Golf GTIs, old Golf Rs, Skodas, Audis. Basically, it was the 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 bread and butter of Volkswagen until they've got onto the DQ 381s and the DQ 500s and stuff like that. Um, so this video is just basically the start of the electronic side of it. So we've got the looms, the parts we've acquired, um, just running down to what we think we'll need. We may come or come uh, with a few hurdles along the way, but that's all the fun of it. So in this video, it will be all the sensors, the throttle body, the pedal, stuff I think we'll need and a bit of strip down of the looms, showing the looms we've got and and basically getting it all ready, to, ready um, like stripped down, ready to go to Matt, who owns Rabbit ECU, which is the ECU that we'll be using to run the DSG gearbox and the engine. So Matt's going to use his genius to make us two looms, one which will be plug and play if you want to keep the uh, throttle that's got a cable on it, that the cable connects to the pedal and it works like that. And the other one will be the loom, whereas if you want to use a DSG gearbox. Right guys, so I know you've watched the video on Project Nigel's um, YouTube channel. Now I thought I'd make a little YouTube video just showing the stuff that we've stripped off or we've accumulated over the the infancy of the project before we send it off to my good friend Matt in um, in Australia so he can work his magic. And just in transparency, I'll tell you how much everything costs and stuff like that so you know that it it's not getting ridiculous and it is in the realms of something people can do. So, like I said before, I do want to show in transparency how much everything costs there or thereabouts off, off memory so that it's not in the realms of stupid and people can do it themselves. So, feels like Christmas unboxing all the time, but so we've got, I think first we've got, got the DSG DQ250 connector. I think this cost me 16 pound off aliexpress so i mean if you went to a breakers and managed to get a dq250 they might have just have this left on you know cut the, the loom cut so that could be um a nice little saving if you got one of them from a breakers but unfortunately the one i got i just got it off a guy so it didn't come with us so i had to acquire this so yeah 16 pound aliexpress most of it, it's like it is sponsored by AliExpress, this, because most of it, I think, came from Ali, AliExpress. So we've got a math sensor. We're going to use a math sensor to control airflow and stuff like that. So we've got a math sensor from an MG6 1.8 TSE, which is sort of the same engine as a Rover 7518 Turbo, just a bit more refined, and it's made by SIAC or SIAC. Someone might tell me how you say that, but... Got a math sensor, unfortunately, came from a breakers on eBay. I think I got this for about £15. Unfortunately, it didn't come with a uh, connector, so I had to acquire one, like I said, AliExpress. I think this cost £3.59, a five pin one. And I have checked it that it fits in that. I don't want to open it now, because if you see, it's got all the tags and crimps in and stuff, so don't want to lose any of them. So then that'll be cursed me. I did say I was running Audi R8 coil packs, coil on plug, four cylinders. So I got a good deal on eBay. I think I got these for seven pound delivered. Six came, so I've got two spur there. So I'll just get one out to show you. All the crimps and everything are bagged up as well. So I think, and that is the tool that clips them in as well. I'm not too sure. I'll let Matt find out about that. <laughs> but um, yeah. I've not ordered the um, Audi R8 coil patch yet, but there's the connector for them. As well, me and Matt, we do have a, a weekly Teams call 
uh, just talk about the progress and the progress of the rabbit ECU and stuff. And I showed him that I'd bought from um, Lidl a cordless uh, lithium, a USB powered soldering iron. And I don't think they've got Lidl's in um, Australia, maybe they do. I don't know, I haven't looked that far into it, but it's not something that probably Matt could readily get off the shelf. And he does a lot of soldering, so, because he's my friend, I got him one of them, so. Yeah, he thanked me later, Matt. We've got the two connectors that come with the Rabbit ECU. Now, Matt sent me these, but obviously, because it's such a complex project, I'm going to send them back with the um, the pinned loom that he sent me so he can do a bit of chop and changing. Just saves him money, you know, having to get them again. Um, not sure how much they cost. Matt might be able to tell you that. Then, from Autodoc, the breakers did a really good job of snapping most of the um, oil temperature sensor, oil pressure sensor, coolant temp sensors, you know, when they were ripping the engine out. So I bought from Autodoc, I think I think they were like £2 each, I'm not sure, but Rover use the same sensor to do oil temperature as they do to do coolant temperature, so just got two of them. And... I think this was two pound as well. We've got the oil pressure sensor. I've been speaking with Matt and because we're running such high um, boost pressure, might be interesting because there's two connections on the, um, two uh, threaded BSP connections on the um, coolant outlet, like the 90 outlet. So it'd be nice to change. It, it's got two temperature sensors on it. I think one controls the fan and one controls the ECU. Be nice for the ECU to control the fan and then we could put a, a coolant pressure sensor there to show if we ever get in the head lifting because the coolant pressure should stay at the same pressure all the time if it's like ramping up as the RPM's going up you're obviously getting some combustion getting into the coolant side from the head. So I've already stripped this from when I took it out at, um, at Paul's lockup but we've got stripped the full engine loom for the Rover 25 that's the 1.4 naturally aspirated loom don't know if you want to get close in all the sensors are in there and that so that's just going to go straight off I'll probably take the injectors off and stuff like that so it lightens it because it will cost me quite a bit to send that to Australia so we've got the throttle body off, I think it was a 2018 or something like that, MG6 1.8 TSE, which is virtually the same engine as a Rover 75 1.8 turbo. So they use the same inlet manifold and stuff like that. So I've checked this and just by being lazy, it bolts straight onto the inlet manifold from the older 2003 1.8 turbo. So this is how we'll control the DSG and just like, rolling anti lag launch control stuff like that and it will just be a lot smoother operation rather than having to use a throttle with a drive-by cable where you're having to where the cable is opening and closing the throttle it's this we can just close the throttle like instantaneously rather than having to take your foot off the off the pedal and stuff like that and we can modulate and we can we can modulate the throttle and stuff like that electronically via the ECU, so it will it will be a lot better than going for the old technology. And I think this cost me um, twenty pounds. I think it was off eBay breakers. We've got a throttle pedal off an MG three one point eight turbo. My thinking is hopefully MG Sayak will have been lazy and use the same chassis and chassis mounting points and stuff like that as the Rover 25. So I'll just be able to bolt this straight in. Matt was thinking we should be using a pedal from an, a Volkswagen Groove Golf, something like that, Skoda, Audi, something like that, that, that he's used before and, and he'll communicate with the Rabbi ECU. But I said, rather than that, let's try and do something a bit different and use MG stuff. I know it's made by Bosch, so it can't be that much different. And it comes with the loom connector as well. So it should be pretty easy for Matt to um, 
plug and have a little play with the ECU and stuff like that, maybe get, you might have to get an oscilloscope on it and see which pins do what, but now behind the scenes I have been getting busy, I've took the 1.8 turbo engine to be 3D scanned and had an adapter plate made for it and stuff like that. This has all been going on waiting for to find the perfect donor car, which you'll have already seen, I've been stripping apart already that was local to me, it came up at the right price, it had an MOT on it, it was drivable to a certain extent and I got it at a really good price. Now, the price of MGZRs, people are asking ridiculous money for them, even with head gasket problems and stuff like that. Whereas you used to be able to pick an MGZR up for virtually next to nothing, you, people couldn't give them away sort of thing. But now, wow, they've gone really quite sought after. So unfortunately, I had to wait and wait and wait and it took a good six to eight months to find the perfect car. Now I did want to do a ZR, but I've settled for a Rover 25. The offer was too good. It was in too good condition. It was the right color. I know it sounds stupid, but my dad used to have a Rover 25, the exact same color model as that. So it does all the place in my heart sort of thing. So yeah, we've been getting busy little bees behind the, uh, behind the scenes. So we've got, an adapter plate, all aluminium, which will connect the DQ250 to the Rover 75 1.8 turbo uh, engine. But I think now people might be able to quote me if I'm wrong, because sometimes I'm wrong, but I'm sure they use the PG1 gearbox on the KV6. So potentially this adapter plate could work on the V6 KV6 as well. We've not tested it yet, maybe in future, that will be something cool to test. But what took me the longest time was to figuring out that Rover used two different crank sensors. They use a two pin analog on mostly the, natu uh, the naturally aspirated 1.4, 1.6, stuff like that with the trigger on the back of the flywheel. Now in the PG1, they use I don't know if I'll be able to get this out now. It's been stuck in there for quite a while. Hopefully I will be due. Uh, they use the three pin uh, digital crank sensor that goes into the gearbox. Now, this was like rocking ass poo to find and to source at the right price because they wanted 40, 50 pounds on Rimmer Bros and eBay and stuff like that. So I managed to find a breaker one for, I think I got it for, um, twelve ninety five. I think I'll check my eBay, but unfortunately, you'll see when I pull that out, the breakers just cut the loom because this must still be in the PG one gearbox in the Rover seventy five, which I brought. My cats have chewed it a little bit. Hopefully, Matt might have to terminate it a bit back because you know how they get. <laughs> but I had to source this connector from AliExpress. I think this cost. £2.59 off the top of my head. So we've got £2.59 AliExpress, three pin, I think it's a BMW sensor um, connector. And a BMW sensor, it is made by Siemens, but there is the digital three pin crank sensor. Here we've got the full 1.8 turbo engine loom with injectors, um, yeah, basically everything here. So probably what I'm gonna to do to save weight, I'm probably gonna strip it down and um, yeah, just make it as light as possible. Okay. So I was just seeing if it had the Volkswagen Audi logo on this connector as it did on the, on the, uh, naturally aspirated loom, but it doesn't, it has Tyco stuff on it. So obviously it's a Tyco connector, this one. Hopefully they're probably the same. Yeah, we'll start stripping this loom and we'll, um, it'll probably be boring you just watching me cutting all the uh, tape off and stuff like that. So probably gonna pause the video here and um, then yeah, when you come back, it'll be all stripped. So we've got a fully stripped Rover 75 1.8 turbo loom. <clears throat> now, there is a, a good few similarities between this and the 
25-1-4, an heirloom. The only differences I can see are the turbo pressure actuator. Um, I noticed that the control for the alternator is a three pin on this, but was a two pin on the 25. I've noticed similar connector going into the fuse box and the, they've cut the battery terminal, but this connector here was different. And the connector looks the same as the one that goes into the fuse box on the Rover 2514 and heirloom. They have cut the battery terminal, so something will have to be done with that. But I don't see the one pin diagnostic connect, uh, see through connector like that one has. That's just got a three pin uh, connector that I don't have no idea what it does in honesty. Everything up now and get it sent over to Matt in Australia. Hopefully you can make sense of the jumble of wires. <laughs> so if you want to use the Rover K-Series turbo engine, but keep the Rover gearbox and you want to use the Rover throttle body, which connects to the pedal via a, a cable similar as, as a clutch cable. We're making a loom for that, but we're also making a loom if you want to use you know, the DSG gearbox and an electronic throttle body and coil on plugs, then we're going to make a loom for that. Yeah, so I appreciate you watching, guys. That's it from me today. Um, basically, what we've done is we've stripped the loom down, lighting it up so I don't get pillaged off uh, Royal Mail. If you're listening, Royal Mail, don't pillage me. <laughs> Yeah, um, so all we're going to do now off camera, you probably won't see, you won't want to see, is just box all this up and get it sent out to Matt in Australia. Matt's got his own YouTube channel, who owns Rabbit ECU, and he'll probably do a few videos um, of the throttle body working with the pedal that I showed you previously. Um, yeah, guys, that, that's it. We've created a bit of a mess, but it can be tidied up. So I do appreciate you watching and um, here's to the next one. See you later.